Almost exactly one year ago, I showed off the best and most advanced VR headset in the world, the Vario XR3, an $8,000 beast from the future. And that video has by far become the most viewed video on this channel. But little did I know that I'd only scratched the surface of the capabilities of this headset. And with the help of Vario themselves, we have pushed the XR3 to its limits and inadvertently blurred the lines between virtual and reality. Have you ever asked yourself, what if you legitimately couldn't tell what was real and what wasn't. Well, today, we're going on a trip to Finland to the Varyu headquarters to take a look at the absolute most cutting-edge virtual reality hardware on the planet. To a place where those lines between reality and virtual reality are becoming harder and harder to define. And to explore this idea to the furthest extent, we'll need to head to Helsinki, the capital of Finland and home base to the Varyu headquarters. Whereas most of the VR industry is focused on building VR for the mass consumer, Vario has a laser focus on building the highest fidelity VR devices possible. On one hand, leading to the XR3 costing more than 20 Quest 2s with an annual subscription on top of that. But on the other hand, leading to companies across the world using Vario headsets for all sorts of things in the medical, automobile, and engineering world. But let me just give a quick recap on the XR3 specs because this is not your typical VR headset and it'll make everything make a little more sense. Featuring four displays, two in the peripheral vision at 2880 by 2720 per eye, and two tiny focus displays at 1920 by 1920 per eye. This combination allows for the highest perceived resolution of any VR headset ever made, with what Vario says is true human eye resolution, at least in the center of the display. The visuals are quite literally unmatched, but the magic isn't in the displays, it's in the sensor package on the front of the headset. When you think of pass-through on a VR headset, this is what most people know, but with the XR3, a combination of sensors, LiDAR, and cameras make both reality and virtual reality come together. And this is where things start to get a little crazy and where we start our journey. At the Vario headquarters, I visited three rooms that they use for testing. The white room, the green room, and the experimental room. And these rooms are where the lines between reality and virtual reality become blurred. I'll start with the white room. This is where Vario tests the masking tool, essentially bringing virtual objects into reality and real objects into VR. And they must know a little about me because one of the first tests was in VR chat. The masking tool allows you to cut holes in virtual reality. This can be to see objects or to be aware of your surroundings, but it can also be used for all sorts of other things, like masking out certain objects so you can interact with them while in VR. Starting off simply, we masked out a physical clipboard as a trackable real world object. And it was incredibly weird to have someone hand me something I could see in virtual reality, but the object was real and readable. It was just cut out of VR. But but even this alone has so much potential for how we can stay connected with the real world while in VR. You could mask out a cup, or your phone, or a DJ deck. However, this whole idea very quickly errs on the trippy side of things. What happens if you mask out a mirror in VR chat for a real mirror? Or leave what I like to call a reality portal. An actual portal where when you walk through in VR, you're back in reality. And when you want to go back into VR chat, you just walk back through the reality doorway. And I don't think this would be as big of a deal if the camera pass-through wasn't so hyper-realistic, but being in something like VR chat and seeing cutouts of the real world that I can interact with in high fidelity feels really weird. And I've never thought of VR being this way, but when you experience it like this, there's this weird split that I almost don't think the human brain was designed to feel, quite literally being in two realities at once. But the white room was just the very start. What I'm about to show you next is still something I can't quite shake. Next door is the green room. The absolute best way I could explain the green room is that it is quite possibly the closest thing in the world to a functioning holodeck from Star Trek. The holodeck essentially being a simulation room that you can walk within and kind of do anything within. And when you step into the green room and put on an XR3, reality completely dissolves around you. This room is not real. This is not real furniture. And this is not a real rug. The sunlight shining through the windows isn't shining from the sun. Yet my body and hands are present 
I'm there. But the really trippy part was realizing that some of the furniture was actually real in the room, but I couldn't tell the difference. I thought everything I was seeing was a simulation until my hands brushed up against something physical, and I realized at this moment in time, I legitimately do not know what is real around me and what isn't. I can't distinguish the two. I've obviously been around real objects all my life, just like we all have been, and I've spent tens of thousands of hours in VR, but I have never truly gotten the two mixed up until now. And this just does something really weird to the brain. The only way I can try to explain this is, well, I want you to look around your room, or wherever you're at, and find an object, let's say a soda can. Imagine you move to grab that can, but your hand just passes right through. You realize at that moment that the can was virtual the whole time. It kind of makes you really look around and wonder what else is or isn't actually there. And that's kind of one of the craziest parts of mixed reality this high resolution both in cameras and in displays. Those lines become blurred enough that you have no choice but to be immersed. Immersion is believing you're in a place, and nothing can make you more immersed than legitimately not knowing where you are and what's around you. The possibilities of something like this are insane, but we'll touch back on that in a second. Also, within in the green room, I was able to test drive a Formula One car, but instead of the typical VR game virtual hands that don't match up with your own, the entire wheel was masked out and replaced with a virtual one, allowing my actual arms and hands to be in game. And I'm not much of a car sim type of person, but this was incredible, leading to me getting lost in the simulation and experiencing a very harsh time distortion effect. What I thought was 10 minutes was closer to an hour, and by the time I was finished driving, I realized that I actually couldn't remember what was physically in front of me, where virtual reality started and where physical reality stopped. It wasn't until I took off the headset that I was reminded of my actual surroundings. That is... Oh! Sorry, I got so distracted. So the final room on this trip is the experimental room, where some of the crazier research is done. Wait, so behind that door is... He thinks that you are not feeling. Oh. <laughs> and this is where I experienced probably one of the most uncanny feelings in my life, like total chills up my spine. You know that feeling like there's someone in the room, or like someone is staring at you, or just something's off? Just that general uneasy feeling? Well, that's what it feels like to have a full-scale metahuman stare at you, making faces in mixed reality this good. It's honestly pretty terrifying feeling a human presence in front of you, full size, and looking almost as real as other humans around you, but knowing that this isn't a real person. All of the sensations that we've evolved to feel are still there, but there's just something off. And I know some people debate this and that's fair, but feeling is believing and, well, I'm a believer. Brushing the avatar's arm and feeling warmth and tingles on my fingers and hair stand up on my arms, this is actual phantom sense. And it's an evolutionary thing, like there's no debate here. Or feeling actual shock when I poked one of the metahumans and having them react, it's incredibly uncanny. I almost had this feeling like they were going to jump out at me or start chasing me. It's almost like a fight or flight instinct was kicking in. I think it's just a weird feeling of being in the presence of something that looks alive but isn't. And of course, I was also shown a more practical version of this test where I was placing down mixed reality furniture, which looked great and super realistic, but tables don't give me chills up my spine when they stare at me, so you can imagine which had a greater impact on me. But all I can really say as a takeaway is what the hell? Like I said, I've been in VR long enough with all all sorts of devices from cheap to expensive, and I have never mixed up reality and virtual reality. But here I am, second guessing things even more than I did with my original XR3 demo, and I thought that was crazy. But I think the real crazy part is that a year ago, I thought this technology was years away, and that was optimistic. That this was the best we were going to have for a long time, and that good mixed reality was even further away. But Vario says this isn't even as good as it can get. Behind closed doors, it can and is even crazier. Which begs the question, if this is how good things are now with the available products, just imagine what is behind these closed doors. I'm always looking for the most immersive or craziest virtual reality technology out there to get that initial feeling of getting in VR for the first time. But what happens when that threshold is crossed and people really can't tell what's real and what isn't real right in front of them? When the lines get blurred so much that you're practically in your own hardware-based trip, 
is this a beautiful thing or is it a terrifying thing? Or maybe somewhere in between? Is it just another piece of tech, just another screen? Or is it Pandora's box? Once opened, people never view typical reality as the same. I think this is a very valid question. It's not that existential when you think about it because while businesses are using this technology to design cars or aid with training, the commercial world tends to take things in unexpected ways and you never know where this could go. And I think now is both the perfect time to get excited for this sort of thing, but also to take it very seriously. Virtual reality and augmented reality isn't just Pokemon Go or Half-Life Alex and floating hands. It is legitimately a perception altering technology at this level. And mixed reality like this at this fidelity is so close to being in everybody's hands and not costing $8,000. Shoot, the Quest Pro, meme or not, is releasing in just about 10 days, and that is a device literally built for mixed reality. Not quite as good as this, but it's also a fraction of the price, and that's exactly what's going to keep happening. Before you know it, VR and mixed reality and eventually augmented reality will just be one technology, even better than this is, and it'll be in everyone's hands. And it's all happening so much faster than I anticipated. Every time we feel like the industry has settled, a company like Vario is going to come through around the corner and push the envelope even further, just blurring those lines between virtual and reality until maybe there is no line. And what was out of reach as a dream for most people is quickly becoming more and more accessible. We've just got a very interesting future ahead of us. I kind of just hope we're ready for it. Because if you think about how society has changed pre-phone or pre-social media to now, I think we're on a weird paradigm shift that will sort of change a lot of things. It's just a very interesting time to be alive. So I'm also planning on making a history of Vario video showing the progression of how they went from the VR1 to the XR3 and what they're working on in the future. So if you're interested in that, please let me know down in the comment section and also tell me what you'd want to see from it. It also helps this video out a lot, of course. But I also wanted to say it was an absolute honor to have the chance to even go to the Vario headquarters and share with everyone the highest end and most immersive experiences that you can have right now. So thank you, Vario, so much. And I think on the behalf of VR enthusiasts around the world, thank you as well. But other than that, I wanted to say thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, especially my Omegas. I couldn't do any of this without you. And don't forget to like this video if you loved it, subscribe if you want more of this, and hit that freaking bell if you just can't live without it. Much love, thrill out.